Yo, 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 guys, welcome back again today. So today we're going to be talking about the outages or load sheddings that's going on in South Africa. So what's going on in South Africa? Since probably maybe the early 2000s, there was a warning of South Africa not having enough capacitors, right? In, in certain administrations in South Africa, maybe all the way back to the Mandela era, right? There was warnings that there needs to be more capacitors being built in South Africa and I guess more so updated um, factories or energy factories to be updated so they can keep up with demand. And so what we have current day, present day, what's been happening for, to my knowledge, maybe the last couple of months, it could be a year or so plus, right? Like I keep up with the whole world. I try to, so I don't know everything about everywhere, but there's been blackouts in South Africa. And so with these blackouts, these blackouts are happening sometimes 10 hours a day, right? Or night. And these blackouts are leaving whole neighborhoods and whole areas without lights, without uh, electricity. So no lights, no way to see, no way to, to do homework or to do things like when it's really, really dark. In the house, I would suspect some people probably would make a fire if they could, right? Or if they had like personalized generators. But a lot of people actually, a lot of businesses are buying personalized generators and these personalized generators are holding them over. But that is also hurtful to the business because those personalized generators take gasoline, right? They take gas or petrol, as a lot of people know it, probably outside of the United States. And so when you have to go buy petrol when it's super high or gas prices are higher, and you have to fill up that generator every day or every other day or maybe every two or three days, depending on what type of generator you might have and, and its fuel consumption, that is another cost on to the business. So a lot of people are complaining, especially with this government right now in South Africa. And a lot of people are very, very irritated and very mad. And there's a lot of protests going on in South Africa. And I sort of kind of understand to some extent, I think some people in America could actually understand, right? Because Obviously, a lot of people think that, you know, the United States is always this country that is just 100 percent perfect and everything goes right and everything works all the time. But a lot of people don't understand is we have storms, we have outages, we have cuts. They, they're just they're rake here where I live at. They're they're rising uh, electricity rates, I think, by like 20 or 30 percent or something crazy like that. Right. So you also have to pay for this energy, right? It's just not like it's free for everybody. And so therefore, there's a lot of people that could probably relate in different countries about power outages. I think the longest that I went through a power outage without actually having uh, electricity and power is probably close to four days. Like that's the longest, but guaranteed every year, especially with like tornadoes and just people maybe running into a pole or maybe there's maintenance, right? Every year it's almost guaranteed which I know, right, doesn't necessarily sound as bad to maybe some people that don't have electricity or they've been going through these type of problems. But just so you can understand that people can relate to you, maybe not at the worst level, but they still can relate to you. There's areas where obviously, probably like in South Africa, the poorer areas, right, like places in my city, places that I know people, places where I grew up at, where they're not going to get the same exact service that people that live in richer areas do first, right? Like majority of the time, not always, but majority of the time, obviously you pay more money, you're probably going to get services quicker because you're a customer or somebody that's very important because obviously you have the means and the funds to pay for these luxuries that some people in the world don't even have, right? So it's been a while since my electric has been out or my power has been out, right? But I understand it. Like there's times where I had to boil water and try to take a shower with boiled water instead of using, just going in the shower and using it, right? So like, I understand what people are actually going through when you're trying to do things at night, when you're trying to like write a paper or when you're trying to t like type something and you have no energy, right? You can't do what you need to do. And obviously these people live in a city, right? Like South Africa is the biggest economy in Africa, if I'm correct, and probably the most developed economy in Africa. And a lot of people would consider certain parts of South Africa very comparable to any Western country in the world. So these people are going through outages that are 10 hours per day, sometimes longer, sometimes a little bit less. And the company ESCOM, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, they're saying that they have to do this. They're saying that 
this is something that is inevitable. They have to sort of kind of inflict this type of situation because, for one, the country of South Africa uses, I think, 27 thousand megawatts of energy i think a day don't quote me on that but i think a day and right now the company and the infrastructure is run, running or can only produce only twenty one thousand megawatts per day or whatever that time period is so it's interesting because people are going to be trying to pull from this energy and therefore it can't deliver what it needs to deliver because the people are demanding more than what they can give or what they are saying that they can give, right? Because their side of the story is, and a lot of analysts' side of the story is, is that, hey guys, we have to have these outages because if we don't have these outages, you guys are going to be pulling more energy from the infrastructure and the infrastructure is not running up to 100% capacity. Maybe it's only running at 70 or 80% because it's an older infrastructure, right? And it's older equipment that needs maintenance that needs to, it can't keep up with demand. It's just older. There needs to either be probably different, multiple smaller locations to help it, or there just needs to be reforms and money put aside to where the infrastructure, the energy sector, as far as this goes, right? In this energy sector, that this can be updated or there can be a brand new plant or plants created and built, right? And then obviously that all goes into, depending on if these things are private or not private or if they're state owned, which I think in South Africa, it possibly might be state owned. And then it goes down to lawmakers, policies, and then the reforms and how much money you're going to allocate into updating the infrastructure and updating this energy source. And, you know, that's sort of kind of what happens to some extent with America. America's infrastructure is not the best compared to the rest of the world. Yes, America is a very rich country, but America's infrastructure is not the best. America's roads are definitely not the best. Believe me, I lived here my whole life. America roads is not the best, especially when you go to different countries, like especially when you go to countries like Japan. Right. So you could also argue that America is a bigger country. Right. But it's just an example to show you that allocating money to the right infrastructure, the leaders, people that are in charge, that are controlling this big mass amount of money, and also how you balance your country and what your country needs, which is a very hard thing to do. I think it's a lot harder than what people actually know. And I think if you gave the power to a person that thinks it's super duper easy, they might run for the hills. It's not that easy to like uh, be over millions, hundreds of millions of people. And, 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 you know, worry about their needs and them constantly needing something and people disagreeing. And it just goes down the rabbit hole. And people constantly have this demand. What's going to happen is there going to be a constant deterioration of this infrastructure, these infrastructures. And then it's just going to get worse and worse and worse to where now it's like, OK, self-inflicted, right, by this company organization, self-inflicted. Hey, we got to turn the lights off. We got to turn electricity off for 10 hours in a row because too many people are trying to take too much energy and we can't provide it. And if we do provide it, the whole infrastructure is going to go down and it's going to overload, right? Like we're going to have to wait and see to see how this plays out. But a lot of people obviously don't have electricity. So therefore, that's going to lead to a lot of people protesting and a lot of citizens getting mad and wanting reform and wanting people to actually go through and spend money to update these energy sources. I mean, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. As we've seen, maybe a couple of months ago, obviously there was a conflict between Egypt and Ethiopia, probably still is an ongoing conflict between Egypt and Ethiopia. And obviously it was over the the dam in Ethiopia. And that dam is going to provide way more energy for Ethiopia, right? So you have to spend a lot of money to build these infrastructures and modernize these infrastructures. And so therefore, that's the situation that you get in when these infrastructures are dated, right? So please like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications so you guys get all my videos. Add me on all social medias, which is African Network, which is Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. Yo, guys, peace. One love.